Hey fellas, I'm back with another batch of the Agnos region's fake mon. More ancient Greek inspired Pokemon for our ancient Greek inspired region. Before we jump into things, if you dig the content, please do subscribe. Think of it as a little gift for me. And speaking of gifts, let me introduce you to the Agnos region's archaic deli bird. I don't think I need to tell you that deli bird is based off of this fat bastard, but are you guys aware of where Christmas originated? Well, Rome. During the winter solstice, the Romans celebrated a holiday known as Saturnalia, honoring their god of the harvest, Saturn, whose Greek equivalent is the king of the titans, Kronos. In fact, Saturnalia was based off of a Greek holiday, Kronia, which honored Kronos. It was a time for feasting, goodwill, generosity to the poor, the exchanging of gifts, and the decoration of trees. Fucking hell, even slaves were treated with human decency. And so every winter, Archaic Deli Bird rocks up to the party and has a grand old time, spreading his seed around everywhere. The seeds that he keeps in his tail pouch. He's just there for good vibes, and those good vibes help bring about a good, bountiful harvest. And you know, it's been a good bloody harvest when this big guy comes marching into town. Kronark, Archaic Deli Bird's evolution. Judging by the amount of shit he's shoved up his ass, looks like it's been a pretty solid festival. His name is a combination of Kronos, as well as Monarch. I already explained the whole Kronos thing, but what about the Monarch in its name? Well, Kronos is the king of the Titans, but what's more is that as a part of Saturnalia, there's a common custom in which the quote, King of Saturnalia will be elected, who would give orders to people, which were to be followed all as a part of the good vibes. So that's that. These Agnos holidays are actually held in Kronark's honour, as seeing them during the winter seasons is said to bring upon bountiful harvest. Though it is mandatory for all the townspeople to bring Kronark a gift, otherwise the harvest might turn to shit. Also, just a fun little detail, you see Kronark's beak and horns? Well, they're shaped like sickles, which are tools used for reaping crops, as well as the weapon Kronos wields. Continuing this trend of Pokemon based off of the Titans, I present to you, Larvite. Now what the fuck does this have to do with the Titans, I hear you ask? Well, there's a flame of brewing in this glowworm's ass, a heavenly flame to be exact, based off of Hyperion, the Titan of Heavenly Light. Larvite, whose name is a mix of lava and light, are often collected as portable light sources. However, this has been seen as an act of cruelty in recent years. Damn fucking social justice warriors making things harder on everyone else. Well, either way, Larvite will evolve into Emanect, who is based off of the European Firebug, as well as Fireflies. Its name is simply a combination of Emanate and Insect. Just like Larvite, there's a fire in Emanect's ass, and this fire is special. A pure flame that will burn indefinitely. Now, a flame that doesn't go out sounds pretty fucking sweet, and well, others had thought the same. So people have actually done some pretty fucked up shit trying to extract this flame, only to find that it can't persist for long outside of Emanek's body. The idea of mankind trying to harness the powers of these flames also mimics the concept of Prometheus giving fire to man. Men were only able to use fire after being given the flame, which is why no mere man can extract Emanek's fire. Now that we've gone over some heavenly fire, let's talk about some mon that burn with the flames of hell. Orthrash and Solberus are based off of Orthrus and Cerberus respectively, as well as Hellhounds. Let's start with Orthrash, whose name comes from Orthrus and Thrash. They loyal as fuck, and will go to hell and back if it means protecting their trainer. But the only instance of Orthrus in the mythos is the story in which he is killed by Heracles whilst guarding Geryon's cattle. Also a detail about the design, you see the skull head. Well, Orthrash often moves its skeletal head atop its main head to use it as a helmet when engaging in physical combat. Oh, and its collar is a Ouija board planchette. Moving on to its evolution, Solberus, which combines Sol and Cerberus for its name. Cerberus was a three-headed dog who guarded the gates of the underworld to prevent the dead from leaving. Capturing him was the last of Heracles' labors, and he was Hades' pet puppy. Much like Orthrash, Solberus too uses its other heads as a helmet. In this case, two half helmets to cover one side each. Solberus has a big, spooky, scary growl that scares away its enemies. And just like Cerberus, Solberus will always make its way back home if it ever gets lost. More context, 
after Cerberus was captured by Heracles, it escaped and managed to return back to the land of the dead by itself. Speaking of dead shit, we have our archaic Beniri. When it comes to her Greek roots, she is based off of the Vrykalakas, which are pretty much a zombie cross vampire. In the Greek lore, one of the way these zombies come about is due to excommunication, getting booted out of a religion. More on that later. Now a difference between Archaic Baneri and the Vrykalakas are their physical appearances. Unlike zombies of your generic folklore, the Vrykalakas don't decay. Instead, they swell up and may even attain a drum-like form. I didn't want to do that. And so I opted to pull a lot of the design inspirations from Blue Baby from The Binding of Isaac. Isaac, but like, dead. The flies on Archaic Baneri have grown strong due to exposure to its soul and attack all who come in contact with its host. They often knock on doors and wait for ignorant people to let them in. If let inside, these flies will swarm the individual and attack at their liver. For context, the Vrykalakas eat livers and knocked on doors, though the people who answer the door will die a couple days after. Archaic Baneri evolves into... Well, it evolves into an Archaic Lopunny. I said we'd talk about that whole excommunication thing later, and later is now. Archaic Lopunny is based off of both the Vrykalakas as well as the Greek Amazons. The Amazons had this whole thing where it was pretty much men equals bad. All male offspring were killed and or sent away, and their society consisted only of chicks. As such, Archaic Lopunny were excommunicated for falling in love with males and became Rikalakas as such. They died of a broken heart, hence the exposed beating heart in the design. Archaic Lopunny tend to grow their fly swarms to army sizes and lash out at any passers-by. They fight together in coordinated attacks, even going as far as having flies enter enemies' mouths and attacking from the inside. We have some more archaics for you. Our archaic cottony. This cottony of the ancient past opts for thin, sharp metal wire instead of cotton. All they know is vibe, carelessly lying around in the bright sun, which heats up their metal wings and may even cause burns to themselves. Archaic Whimsicott expands on this idea, but it's now full inspired by the legendary Golden Fleece of Greece mythology. So, why isn't it golden? Well, I went over this in a previous video, but these legendary golden creatures will be golden in their shiny forms. So, Golden Fleece, the fleece of a winged golden ram who was sent by Nepheli to save her kids. Eventually, it was sacrificed to Poseidon, got chucked up in the sky as the constellation Ares, and his fleece hung on an oak tree. Then, the hero Jason, stole it from King Aetis. Despite our archaic Whimsicott's coat being pretty much barbed wire, it can effectively change how cushiony it is. When in this cushiony state, it is even said that contact with it will calm all nerves. Something I didn't mention about the Golden Fleece, however, is that the oak tree in which it was placed was guarded by the Colchin Dragon, a dragon that never sleeps and that was slew by Jason. And that is the inspiration for our next Agnos Pokemon, Cold Sparse, a Dunsparce evolution. And much like the Colchin Dragon, which is also where he gets his name, Cold Sparse never sleeps. Or, well, in actuality, it's more like it's in a constant state of zen. Always resting, but never asleep. Wild Cold Sparse will often find one place to call home and protect it with their lives. Guardians of the area they reside, and the other Pokemon that inhabit that same area. Another big dragon in ancient Greek myths was Ladon who guarded the golden apples of the Hesperides. Ladon was another multi-headed serpentine dragon, but, well, um... We got enough fucking serpentine Pokemon, so I opted for something different. Let me introduce you to Yarn Mana, a split evolution of Yanma. In the myths, Heracles killed the serpent with his bow so he could get those apples. Though other sources claim that he had the Titan and Atlas fetch them for him while Heracles held up the sky. Yarn Mana from Yanma and Mana is essentially a dragon and alchemist. As you can see from its eyes, which are golden apples, gold is important in its design inspiration. Obviously, the golden apples of the Hesperides, but also in common folklore, dragons love gold. And in alchemy, gold represents the perfection of matter. And because he's a wise old alchemist mage, he has those long wispy grey hairs and beard. And although it's all wise and shit, there are often times where it just completely whiffs its attacks. Sometimes it will deal mass damage with impeccable accuracy, but other times it'll be a dud. Another smart fucker we have in Agnos is our last fake mon of the video, Iskun Zu, this blobby cunt. Despite the way it looks, it's actually a psychic fighting type, not poison. 
He is a parasite that leeches onto other Pokemon and uses their strength to attack, which can be seen in its signature ability, Parasite. When Iskanzu is sent out with an ally Pokemon, it will use the Pokemon as both weapon and meat shield. Iskanzu will use the host Pokemon stats to deal damage and is invulnerable to all attacks until the host is dead or switched out. He is based off of two legendary battle strategists of the past, Iskander, Alexander the Great, and Sun Tzu, author of The Art of War. You see, on very rare occasions, when an Iskanzu harmonizes with a human host, genius level battle strategists have been born. That brings us to the end of this batch of Agnos Fakemon and the end of this video. I hope you like the Pokemon. Please, make sure to subscribe, tell me what you think in the comments below, and I'll catch you fellas around.